Good morning, Kahal Kadosh, Beruchim Abaim to everyone. Today, the 22nd day of Kislev, corresponding to the 16th day of December 2022, Erev Shabbat Kodesh Perashat Bayekev, Makam, Bayeshev rather, Makam Nahawand. Be'ezat Hashem, this coming Sunday night, we'll be celebrating the first night of Hanukkah. Today's class, graciously dedicated Le'elu Nishmat, Sarah Batmini, graciously sponsored by her husband, Mr. Clemente Beda Cohen. Additionally, today's class sponsored Le'elu Nishmat, Rebecca Batsarina, but the Alfasi Awarman families. Additionally, today's class dedicated Le'elu Nishmat, Shoshana Batlea, Mrs. Florence Chera by her son, Maurice Chera and family. And also today's class graciously dedicated Le'elu Nishmat, Arie Ben Shemuel. May the Neshamot have an Aliyah in Gan Eden. Amen. There is a lot of things that I would like to discuss today. We have Perashat by Yeshev, that's usually read in the vicinity of Hanukkah. And we also have the beautiful Yom Tov of Hanukkah, Haba Aleno Letova. So I suggest that we should leave the Halachot of Hanukkah for Sunday, with your permission, although Sunday morning is a mega day because it's the yard site of Hacham Shaul Kassin, the yard site of Mr. Edmond Safra, Alava Shalom, and Mr. Yosef Safra, Alava Shalom. The three great men, all in the same day, with many years in between. So I think that will save the practical halachot and uh, their life. Uh, for Sunday, but today perhaps we learn a short message about Perashat uh, by Yeshev, and then we begin to warm up about Hanukkah. Although we have an entire week of Hanukkah, but it's my intention by Hashem to cover as much ground as I can in order to welcome this magnificent uh, Yom Tov in the most beautiful and auspicious uh, manner. So we know. The basic concept of this week's perasha, today is Thursday, so let me open up the right page. It's all about the life of Yosef HaSadik. And one of the reasons why Hanukkah and Perashat Bayeshev and Perashat Mikez are always around Hanukkah because in a, in a, in a certain way, the miracle of Hanukkah and the miracle of the survival of Yosef HaSadik, they are basically the same concept. What was the dangers of Yosef? Assimilation. What was the goal of the Greeks? To assimilate the Jewish people. They weren't against people doing a lot of misvot, but they were against certain misvot. For example, don't circumcise your child, don't celebrate Shabbat, don't celebrate Rosh Chodesh, don't celebrate the holidays, don't learn Torah, the ladies don't go to the mikveh, don't eat kasher. That was the end of it. So they may say, but hold on, you only mentioned seven commandments. I'm giving you 606 additional commandments that you can do. But let's be honest, these are non-negotiable items okay this was the connection between yosef and the miracle of hanukkah with that being said one of the pesukim actually we mentioned it uh, i think last week in one of the classes of the musar of today on that fateful day that really had the power to change history or to destroy history. Because we need to know the following. The fact that Yosef HaSaddiq survived the challenges, especially in that day. Remember when, when um, the wife of Potiphar <laughs> says the Pasuk, Bayabo Habaita, the Pasuk writes that she made advances to him yom yom. Potiphar, 
every day for how many days a whole year three times a day three times a day shaharit min han arvit and she wasn't wearing the same outfit every day and she attempted to seduce yosef and the pasuk says by he keda berail yosef yom yom every day literally every day every day belo shama ileha he refused to listen to her lishkavet sla liot imma to lay down with her and to be with her and basically the mafarshim explains why the redundancy of this verse so rashi explains based on the midrash rabbah that she knew that intimately and i apologize in advance to the virtual female audience that intimately she was okay not being with him but he she wanted to lay down with him that's what rashi says even without being together and yosef asadik says you don't understand do you think because i'm gonna lay down with you without intimately being with you i'm allowed to do that and that's why rashi says liot imma la olam abba the gemara in sota says that regretfully and this is something important with the permission of the kahal although this is not the topic but this is a misconception that people have when it comes to family purity they sleep on the same bed they don't touch each other but halakhically you're not allowed to you have to have two separate beds during the month the time of the month ah so you only have one bed guess what buy a second bed buy a second mattress or a futon or inflatable bed i'm not sure how comfortable they are but this is an interesting hidden message here and the gemara brings a story about this topic which we're not going to discuss today comes the next pasuk by he and it was a day like this what day was this for american society we can say december 25th December 25th now what is December 25th is a day Xmas Yeshu a day that the Gentile world celebrates it as a religious holiday and that's what the Mefarshim say they had a religious holiday that they all went to church that day and she claimed not feeling well she says this is the day that I can activate my threat against Yosef. And it says, Since no one was around, Yosef came to do work. Remember that Yosef was, let's call him the accountant, the supervisor, the concierge. This is before Viceroy. This is way earlier when he was only managing the palace of, Par of uh, 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 Potiphar. So what Yosef says, no one is around. It's like you come to the office. Sometimes I accomplish more being in the office on a Sunday, an hour or two that the phone doesn't ring and usually I don't have appointments early morning than I can do on a Monday from 10 to 4 because of the action so it's a mahloket actually that yosef came one opinion says that yosef came to do work it's a mahloket between two great sages rav and shemuel one opinion says he came to do his regular day-to-day -day work he wanted to accomplish more a second opinion says you know why Yosef came back that day? Because, no, because he wanted to do Heshbonot. What's the meaning of Heshbonot in English? Accounting. Accounting. Most of us will say earnings, profit, expenses, 
losses, management, etc. You know what the Holy Book says? Yosef came to do his own Heshbon Hanefesh, his own accounting or spirituality. Why is he going through these challenges? That for a whole year, he's being bothered to commit a sin. He says, where did I go wrong? Has the shalom. But okay, that's basically what it means. Why this is happening to me? She grabs him, the pasuk says. She chvai me. Lay down with me. And he abandoned her garments in her hands. He retrieved and ran away. So imagine yourself. She grabs you. And in the olden days, they didn't have shirts that you have them the way they are worn today. If you want to remove the shirt, what are you supposed to do? You're supposed to open it and remove your sleeves. In this case, it was completely the opposite. It was a tunic, so the sleeves were hanging by the hands of Zuleicha. That was the name of Potiphar's wife. And he was able to escape. On this verse, on this verse, next week, we're going to be reciting the Hallel every day. In the second chapter of the Hallel, Beset Israel Mimisraim, the Pasuk there says, Hayam Vayanos, Tisob Leahor. It says, The Yam, the Yam Suf, the Sea of Reeds, or the Red Sea, saw and retrieved. Interesting enough that the Pasuk in Tehillim and the Pasuk of the Perasha uses the same words. Bayanos. So it says, what did the sea of reeds saw that retrieved backwards? It says, so the Aaron of Yosef saw the coffin of Yosef. And the, the sea says, because of Yosef retrieved and walked backwards, I'm retrieving myself, says the sea, the ocean, and I'm walking backwards to enable the Jewish people to walk in the middle of the Red Sea. So the Keriat Yamsuf in part happened in the merit of Yosef as Sadiqs this week's Torah portion. You see the connection? Thank you for coming. I think that with this being said, we covered the relationship between Hanukkah and Yosef. Hanukkah is survival against assimilation. Yosef was survival against assimilation. Not only that, I'll, I say one more thing. I will this, I'm going to switch the topic. Maybe I'll add you one, two, two minutes on the Shabbat message of the day because that's what the Zohar of today discusses. Uh, now, concerning what I was about to say, David, a Melech, says in the book of Tehillim, B'nei Yaakov Yosef Sela. We are called the sons of Yaakov and the sons of Yosef. So technically, we are called Yosefim. But we are not really called Yosefim. We are called Yehudim. Now, why David Melech says we need to be called Yosefim? There are two answers. The name Yosef means to add, to increase. Which in a way, this is the mission of a Jew. We increase in our prayers. We increase in our charities. We increase in our learning. We increase in our misvot. We never satisfied. Even though yesterday we did misvot and we prayed and we did whatever we did, today we do the same. Why? Because the neshama needs to eat. Like your body needed to eat yesterday and your body needs to eat today, the neshama needs the same. So in a way, that's what we are called Yosefim, 
to add, to increase in our spiritual life. But there is also one message of Yosef. Yosef is about survival against all odds. Yosef is about keeping our head above water. And it is true. What do you think? That we don't have challenges today? We have challenges. We all have them. We have generational challenges. That's why the Noah Melimelech in Perashat Noah, and I may have mentioned this in the beginning of Bereshit, that when the Pasuk says, Tamim Haya Bedorotav, that Noah was a wholesome person in his generations, the Noah Melimelech explains that every generation of human history has to overcome challenges. And the challenges are custom made based on the generation. That's it. Today, I'll bring a few examples. Today, to eat kasher is not a big deal. It's very easy to eat kasher. Any place in the world you go, you find kosher food. Even in Dubai, they opened a kosher supermarket a few days ago. Very nice. So they already have minyanim. I think they're building a mikveh. They have two shuls at least. They have a Talmud Torah. And now they open a kosher supermarket. And I think that there is a kosher hotel that has meals prepaid. Don't ask me on the prices. Probably it's high. But look, you can go. You know, somebody went to the World Cup. I know someone who traveled to watch the game in the World Cup. And he told me, Rabbi, I arrived to the hotel and there was a tray of kosher food waiting for me. Wow. They got it from Dubai, apparently. Dubai, Qatar, they seem to be very close to each other, right? Not too far, closer than Israel. And easier because it comes from the Arab world. So it says, look, I'm eating a nice deli sandwich, fresh, with side dishes, sealed, put it in the microwave, eat a warm meal. He went, he, f he flew from Brooklyn to, wa to watch the World Cup. Baruch Hashem, Argentina won that game. And I'm not sure if he's staying for Shabbat for a Sunday mega game. So Sunday we need to finish on time. He said, we have it, but doesn't have TV access. There's a kosher TV, not TV access. But perhaps uh, the technical department, you know, we can fix that, I think, with a little uh, plug-in. Has the shalom. But uh, without sound, yes, just look, right? So, you know, and this is what this fellow did. He flew to watch the game. And he, ate, he found kosher food. I'm not sure if he found a minyan, but he, he uh, maybe, probably, no, in Qatar. Oh, Qatar. You know, uh, the, the plenty, plenty, probably, probably there is a tefillin stand by the Chabad boys, you know, putting, but for sure that there are Yehudim there watching the game. Maybe many Israelis that came, etc. Okay, now I'm not telling you to travel now on Mosai Shabbat to Qatar. I don't think you'll make it for the final game. Okay, stick around here. Probably not. Also, we have a Sefer Torah dedication Sunday. Two o'clock. We have to change it. Originally, if you see the first flyer, ten o'clock. But then we said, no, has the Shalom. Final game of the World Cup. How can you do a Torah dedication at the same time? Behemet. Right. So many people said, Rabbi, we're coming after the game. So I spoke to the Ba'ala Simha. And I said, listen. We want to make this beautiful Sefer Torah dedication, by the way, from a Sefer Torah winner, from the raffle that we have in our synagogue. This Sefer Torah is coming from, by the way. Uh, yes, and Baruch Hashem. No, number, he's winner number eight. Number 13 wasn't done yet. We're still selling. Baruch Hashem, we still have a few more tickets available. Thank you. We'll take care of you. Don't worry about it. Shalom. Anyways. Okay, so look at this. So every generation says the Noam Elimelech. 
I know the people in itorah.com saying, what this rabbi is talking about? We came for the Torah class. Now he's giving us a shiur on the World Cup. Okay? And now he's telling us how to get kosher food in Qatar. So I'm getting to the Devar Torah. Relax. You know, American people do a lot of things about the World Series. Which I have, an, I have a question to the American audience. You call it the World Series. Who is playing? Mostly American teams. And maybe one Canadian team. I don't understand why you call it World Series. We call it on Tiku. We'll discuss this some of the time. Okay? Or the Super Bowl. Besides the Super Bowl, the names okay. makes more sense. Let's continue. So the Noam Melech says, every generation comes with its challenges. So today to eat kasher is easy. Today for a bride to go to the mikveh, for a Jewish wife to go to the mikveh, it's easy. You just need to decide which mikveh to go to. Even our city, for many years, we only had, in I'm saying Miami-Dade County, maybe two mikvehs. Today, probably in the state of Florida, you have at least 25 mikvehs, 30 mikvehs. I'm talking about ladies only. Forget about men and dishes. Baruch Hashem. So today to go to the mikveh and one more beautiful than the other. It's very practical, very convenient. Kosher restaurants, easy. I told you, I went to Israel, I went to Argentina. Many years back, I went to Brazil. No issue to finding Panama. No issue of finding kosher food. Today, all this is easy. But we do have other type of challenges. You can call them addictions. That includes alcoholism. That includes gambling, has shalom. That includes all these kinds of things which suddenly became permissible. You have immorality challenges. Unfortunately, our president signed a, 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 a law that same-gender marriage is officially recognized, and that's a problem. No comments. Please, keep the comments to yourself, because this goes live, and this goes to the entire world. And then I don't need to have a headache that somebody caught some pace, because this is what's happening now. People with malicious intent, they taking a lot of Torah content, they are coding it, and they put in three second statement, and they say, this rabbi said this and this. It's happening. I'm telling you this because I'm in the rabbinical field, and I see what's happening. So, Be'ezat Hashem, we keep our comments to ourselves, but the fact is the fact. He signed into law that same gender relationship is an officially recognized marriage. It used to be by states, now became nationwide. And that's a problem. That's a problem. That's a spiritual problem. That's a spiritual problem. Has shalom. So we hope and pray that Hashem protects us from this type of challenge. Imagine yourself, God forbid, if Yosef would have not survived the challenge of this week's perasha. Two things will have happened. Number one, the 12 tribes of Israel would have to wait another generation because Yaakov needed to have the 12 tribes. If one is gone, the whole package is gone. And number two, what would have been with us? And that's why when Yaakov at the end of the perasha in the Sefer, perasha by He and perasha by Gash, which discusses how Yaakov eventually meets his son Yosef, the Pasuk says that Yaakov was revived by the divine spirit of Hashem. But the he, Ruach Yaakov Avihem, the spirit of Yaakov revived, resurrected. 
Why? Because Yaakov was afraid of what is really going on with his son. If he's dead, that means that the 12 tribes became 11. If he's physically alive and spiritually dead, that means that 12 tribes of Israel remain 11. So either way, Yaakov says, I don't know which one is worse, to be physically dead or spiritually dead. And this was a pain and a question that lingered in the heart of Yaakov Avinu for 22 years. For 22 years, Yaakov Avino was in a depressing mode, not knowing what's really going on. Because he was told a wild creation devour Yosef. Now, what does it mean, a wild creation? Esav was also a wild creation, Nimrod was also a wild creation. The Yeserara is also a wild creation. So Yaakov really doesn't understand. Is he dead physically or is he dead spiritually? When whatever happens and the message and the, and the chariots and everything that happened with Yosef, then Yaakov says, now I'm happy. Switch the topic. The time is now. Okay. A one of the messages that the Be'er Haim brings down about Hanukkah is not so much about Hanukkah but he speaks about preparations for Hanukkah now if I say this preparations for Hanukkah what does that mean to you make sure the menorah is clean make sure to have oil candles matches dreidels you buy a couple of donuts Oh, I need to get donuts for next week. Thank you for the reminder. <laughs> jelly or custard? Both, both right? Jelly, jelly. Both. Okay, we'll put a poll later. Okay, I think both. So it says the Be'er Haim, and it says, a person must understand that when a, the celebration of Hanukkah arrives, it's not automatic that you light the menorah and suddenly you carry the electricity of Hanukkah. It says you need to warm up to Hanukkah. And that's why we're starting today. We're not starting on, Sun on Monday. We're starting today. So it says the question, what kind of preparation I need to have about Hanukkah? So it says you need to plan it in your heart and in your brain. What does that mean? So he brings here an interesting remez hint from a great rabbi by the name of Yeshuot Moshe. And it says that in Hebrew, how do you say brain? Moah. And heart, you say lev. If you put together these two words, 48 plus 32 equals 80. The same numerical value as the word hachana. What's the meaning of the word hachana in Hebrew? Preparation. Preparation. Hinuch is education. Hanukkah is inauguration. Hachana is preparation. Let's clear the road. So it says you must prepare your brain and your heart to welcoming the holiday. And it's not enough to do one of them. You need to do both of them. Why? Because both of them are drivers in the life of a Jew. 
Sometimes your intellect makes a decision. Sometimes your emotion, your feelings makes the decision. And there is always an argument. Who runs the show? The brain or the heart? Don't answer that question. The brain must have most of the time the upper hand. Because if you make a decision based on emotions, not always you will make the proper decision. You let the emotions, it's like you say, you let the impulse do the talking. And we know well that doing things on an impulse, unless it's something good, it could be detrimental. And therefore it says, we have many, many halachot of Hanukkah. We have many halachot of Hanukkah. But it says the halachot of Hanukkah are connected to the spiritual aspect of life. The Gemara asks in Masechet Shabbat, my Hanukkah, what is Hanukkah? So you have two ways of answering the laws of Hanukkah, right? You light one candle the first night, second candle, first night you say three berachot, right to left, then left to right the consequent nights. All that is beautiful. Or we can answer the Gemara question, what is my labor that I need to concentrate on Hanukkah? So it says, the Imbre Emet discusses that there are many misvot in our Torah, which is the concept of celebration of Hanukkah. But as we said in the name of Yeshuaot Moshe, the Shilte Giborim, the Gemara in Shabbat 21, and the uh, Imbre Emet. And it says, each one on their own fashion, but it says, the lights of Hanukkah, they need to talk to the Neshama and to the brain of the, to the heart and to the brain of the person. Meaning to say, infuse your brain and your heart with the beautiful light of the menorah, which is all about survival against the threat of assimilation. As I said before, the Greeks, they learn from Haman. Remember Haman. Let me give you a brief introduction. A brief introduction. Chronologically, History went as follows. Building of the first Beit HaMikdash, right? By Shalomo. Destruction of the first Beit HaMikdash by Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babel. Seventy years later, we had the threat and miracle of Purim. Okay? Afterwards, building of the second temple. Second Beit HaMikdash. Give or take... 200 years before the destruction of Beta Mikdash number two, the Greeks attempted to destroy it and to assimilate the Jewish people. Now, what was the tactics of the Greeks? The Greeks says the following. The last time in history that someone seek the destruction of the Jewish people that means the annihilation of the Jewish people. Because this was Haman's plan. What was the plan of Haman? Haman wanted to exterminate, eradicate, and get rid of the entire Jewish nation in one day worldwide. Look in the Megillat Esther. Leashmid, Laharog, Ulabed, et Kola Yehudim. In one day. So the Greeks understood that that tactic wasn't successful. But they also understood that there is another tactic that can be very successful. You know what was the name of the tactic? Assimilation. Assimilation, God forbid, you know, what Hitler didn't do during the Holocaust 
assimilation is doing it now. That's why these days, and I know that it's a heavy statement to say, but we have something called the silent holocaust. What was the silent holocaust all about? Basically, assimilation. And once assimilation takes place, intermarriage takes place, that's the end of the, of genera of the generation. So this was the plan of the Greeks. That's why regretfully, regretfully, there were many Jewish people that felt an attraction to the Greek ideals, to the Greek mythology. These were called Mid-Yavnim. Those, they became the Hellenist. Yani, they wanted, they were attracted by the Olympic Games. You know, the world makes a big deal out of the Olympic Games. If you want to know the facts, the Olympic Games was established around the time of Hanukkah. And the idea was to idolize, it's an Abu Zara game, sure, it's an idolatry game. Maybe today, nations of the world, they compete in the name of sporting event, correct? But the original idea of the Olympic Games established by the Greeks it was based on the Abu Dazara, the idol of the body, the idol of men, the idol of women, the idol of money, the idol of sports. This is how the Greeks established many pathways to, to attract the Jewish people. And regretfully, regretfully, many people fell in that trap. And that's what makes the miracle of Hanukkah a magnified miracle because the miracle of Purim was about physical survival. The miracle of Hanukkah was about the spiritual survival of the Jewish people. And that's why the miracle is not done with a lot of fanfare in the sense in Purim we have a lot of misvot, mishloach manot, Matanot Levionim, eh, 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 Megillah twice, we have the Sauda, but in Hanukkah we have no many misvot. Sure, we have the Hallel every day, Sefer Torah every day, we have the, 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 the dairy items, we have the oily foods, we have the lighting of the menorah, etc. But this is in a nutshell why Hanukkah and Purim. Both of them are holidays of survival. Purim on the physical aspect and Hanukkah on the spiritual. And that's why he mentioned the topic of Hachana, the concept of a person preparing for the holiday to get ready to receive the Beracha that the holiday is about to start delivering by Ezat Hashem this coming Sunday evening, first night of Hanukkah. We wish everybody a Shabbat Shalom. Hak Sameach. Tiskul Eshanim Rabot. And Be'ezat Hashem will see each other a bit later. Baruch Adonai Le'olam. Amen Be'amen. Rabbi Hanania Ben-Akashia Omer. Ratsa Kadosh Baruch Hu. Lezakot et Israel Lefichach. Irmalehen Torah Mizvot Shene